Hello people and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. Today we have another tactic to test and it's a fantastic one. We've tested it with three different teams, Real Sociedad in La Liga, Wolves in the Premier League but also Dortmund in a testing league where all the teams in this testing league are the top five or top three? I can't remember but they are the top teams in the European top five league so that is going to be a juicy test. In this video we are also going to be playing a match so you can see the tactic play out live I guess. <laughs> so before we get stuck into things make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like this video, make sure you share it, leave a comment, all of that stuff really does help this channel. The channel will grow and I can provide some better content. Also. This video is sponsored by the One Footballing ad, so make sure you check out this ad. One Football have been amazing enough to sponsor this video, and what I need for you guys to do is check out the app. The link will be in the description, it's fairly easy to do. You can download it via the link or you can use the barcode on the screen. The app is a great footballing app, it's where you can check the latest statistics, the latest football news. You can also watch some live free games. Yes, you heard me right, you can watch free games live. For free, for free on the footballing app. It's my favourite place to keep up to date with the most recent football news. You can also find some fantastic analysis and match reports on the One Football app as well. If you're attempting to replicate tactics like I do on this channel, you can also use this app to grab the latest match stats and all of that good stuff. So make sure you check out the app. The link is in the description, but also you can use the barcode on the screen. And trust me, you will not regret downloading this app. Before we get stuck into the results and the tactics in this video, I would just like to thank everybody for their support, watching my videos and also reading my analytical work on my website as well. All of that has helped me reach to the point where now I'm proud to say I'm a performance analyst at Cheltenham Town Ladies, which you can see here as I'm wearing the training top. I haven't taken this top off since yesterday. We had an away match yesterday. I haven't taken it off. I'm so proud to be wearing the shirt. but. Thank you guys for all the support that has really helped me reach the stage and hopefully this is just a step closer to my dream. But now let's get stuck into this video. So this time we're going to do things a little different. So we're going to look at the test results first of Real Sociedad and Wolves. We're just going to look at the results and then we're going to look at the tactics, play the game and look at the results from the testing league. The testing league is probably one of the most intriguing parts of this video, which is the reason why I'm leaving at the end where we can see all the stats and the details in depth. But now let's look at the results from Real Sociedad and Wolves before we look at the tactic and play that game. So for Real Sociedad, we've done extremely well in La Liga. We finished second with Real Sociedad. We played 38, we won 28, we drew four, guessing we lost six, if my math is correct. In the UEFA Europa League, we finished third in the group stage, which is kind of a disappointment. In the UEFA Conference League, we got knocked out in the second round by Roma and in the Copa del Rey. Well, we won that actually. We beat Seville 5-1 in the final. Wow. So in the final, Grossa Bell scored, Isak, Sherloff, Munoz and Munoz again, the left wing back, or the left back, sorry, he scored two goals. It'll be intriguing to see what role he's on. So we did win a trophy and we finished second in the league. Looking at the stats here, the team overall, we scored the most goals. We scored 100 goals. We had the most shots for. For the fewest shots against, we finished seventh. So defensively, we can maybe tweak something, but... We are overachieved nonetheless. The pass completion ratio, we're not in the top eight. Most possession, we're not in the top eight. <laughs> For the most tackles won, we are first though with 728 tackles won. For the most dribbles made, we are in fourth place. For the clean sheets, we're in fifth place. And for the fewest conceded, we are joint third. So technically, we're not very bad defensively or we're not bad at all defensively, but maybe we can tweak things to make it a little bit more defensively solid possibly for the goal score the top goal scorer alexandra isak in second place ayotza bell i hope i pronounced his name right mikhail ayotza bell ayotza bell help me <laughs> he's in eighth place with 17 goals so our two strikers i'm guessing are in that most goals list david silver joint top with the assist yunazai in third place with 11 alexandra isak also on 11 and we also have ander our winger on 10 most shots for Alexander Isak on top of that list for the most man of the match awards Alexander Isak well he's a very important player very important for the most key passes Adnan Yanazai is it Yanazai or Yanazai 
I'm saying Yanozai. <laughs> he completed 190 key passes with David Silva in 6th place on 113. For the best pass completion, nobody in that top 8 for the tackles won. Nobody in the top 8. So that was a team effort. For the dribbles made, again, nobody in the top 8. For the most clean sheets, we do have Alex Romero on 13. And for the viewers conceded, well, our goalkeeper is not in that top 8 list. Let's look at the squad stats. Who were the top goal scorers? Who were the highest assists? Well, we kind of got a good gist of that. <laughs> Alexander Isak on 37 goals in all competitions. Alexander Sholov, he's got 28 goals, 12 assists as well. So the strikers, they also like to assist. David Silva has 12 goals, 19 assists. Robin Lienomand, he's got 10 goals, 2 assists. And Andoni Grossabel has 9 goals and 8 assists. Looking at the top assist, Yanazai with 24. David Silva there with 19. Anda, our winger, on 17. Nacho, Nacho, my player. He's on 11. Sit by, he's an ex-Arsenal player, which is why he's my player. <laughs> and Nacho Monreal, he's on 11 assists. Mikel Moreno, a player that I like. He has nine assists. So here in the data hub, we don't really need to go into too much details in the data hub. Of course, we can leave that towards the end in that testing league. But for the attacking efficiency, Real Sociedad were aggressive and clinical with their shooting. Defensively, for the defensive efficiency, we were quiet and we were impenetrable. So though I said maybe you can tweak things defensively, you don't necessarily need to because as we can see, defensively, we were well performing quite well for the goal output we were high scoring and impenetrable defense and for the scoring we were high scoring and we were aggressive in our shooting looking at the past map as well from the most recent game i believe we won this game 6-2 now let me double check that let me double check oh we won 9-3 there who was that against leicester we beat leicester 9-3 absolute wow Luganes as well, 8-1. So we have some high-scoring games here. Well, we lost 5-2 away to Galatasaray. We beat Osasuna 7-1, Seville 5-1, and Espanyol. Yep, yeah, that's right. In the last La Liga game, we won 6-2. So going back to that data hub, this is the pass map. This is the passing link from that most recent game where we won 6-2. The two centre-backs there, we have two full-backs, I'm guessing. It's a 4-1-2-1-2. A 4-4-2 diamond with two wingers, basically. I can see the wingers there, the attacking midfield, defensive midfielder with the two strikers. Attacking-wise, we are covering all of these vertical channels. So we are covering all five vertical channels, which is offensively very dangerous, which is why, or possibly why, we scored 100 goals with Seville. But now, let's load up that West Ham save and see how well they did, shall we? I said West Ham, but I'm sure it's Wolves. As we can see here, it is Wolves. So here we are with Wolves and honestly, I don't know what's more impressive. The fact that we finished second or for the fact that we have the exact record as Real Sociedad. We played 38, we won 28, we drew 4 and we lost 6. Coincidence, crazy. In the Emirates FA Cup, we got knocked out in the third round by Bournemouth, which is slightly disappointing. And in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the second round by Leeds United. But this here, that's absolute crazy. Exact same record. So, in the Premier League, if we check the team overall, again, we scored the most goals, but this time we scored more than we did with Real Sociedad. With Wolves, we scored 110 goals. This is absolutely crazy. Attackingly, attackingly, attacking wise, this tactic is absolutely mental. For the shots for Wolves on 791, for the fewest shots against, Wolves are not in that top eight. So, teams do tend to have a lot of shots against us for the best pass completion again not in the top eight for the most possession well we are in the top eight this time with 51 percent most tackles won wolves in third place so this type so this tactic tends to win a lot of tackles for the dribbles made wolves on top of that league with 570 for the most clean sheets wolves joint six and for the fewest conceded well we aren't in the top eight for the player stats for the top goal scorer Real Jimenez is the top goal scorer in the Premier League with 28 goals. Jao Martinho with the most assist on 18. Adama Traore in second place with 15. Raul Jimenez in joint fourth place with 12 assists. 
For the most shots for Raul Jimenez again in joint fourth with Ivan Tony. For the most man of the match awards, <laughs> Raul Jimenez in joint first place with eight man of the match awards. For the most key passes, Jao Montinho on top of that list by some distance as well. For the best pass completion, nobody in the top eight. Most dribbles made or most tackles made, sorry. Most tackles won even. Adama Traore in joint six. For the most dribbles made, Adama Traore in second place. That was no surprise whatsoever. Most clean sheets, we do have Jose Sarr in joint fourth place with Martinez and David De Gea. And for the fewest conceded, Jose Sarr is not in that top eight. Now looking at the squad stats, who were the top goal scorers? Raul Jimenez with 28 goals in all competitions. Hwang Hee Chan with 18 goals in all competitions. Fabio Silva with 13 and 14 starts, which is fairly decent. Jao Martino with nine and Johnny with five. For the top assist, Jao Montinho with 18 in all comps, Adama Traore with 16, Raul Jimenez with 12, Pedro Neto with 9. We're now going to open up that testing league where we are going to be looking at the tactic next, playing the game and then looking at the test league results. So let's load up that save, look at the tactic and play a game. So here we are in that FM Tactics Hub League. We did pick Dortmund and at the beginning of the save, Dortmund were predicted to finish 12th. The actual media prediction and the season overall or season preview at the start, they were predicted to finish 12th, which is bang in mid table. And as you can see with all of these teams as well, they are made up from the top five teams in the top five European leagues. And obviously you can see Liverpool, Manchester City, Man United, Chelsea, and Arsenal will be the top five teams in the English Premier League. Well, you could say Tottenham, but Tottenham are bad. <laughs> so we did pick Dortmund and now we can look at the tactic before we get into that game. The tactic that we are testing today is called Mongoose Rejuvenated and it is created by CBP. He's an admin in my Discord channel as well. Make sure you check out the Discord. There are some fantastic tactics flying about but also some nice tactical talk as well. So here is the tactic Mongoose Rejuvenated created by CBP. What a fantastic guy he is. It's a 4-4-2 diamond as well but with two wingers and obviously you can see those two wingers are defensive wingers we're just gonna have a quick run through the tactic before getting into that game and then looking at the results tested in this testing league so the mentality is set to positive the attacking width is unfairly wide so we are stretching that play but not exclusively for the approach play we are going to be playing out from the defense which you would notice your defensive midfielder will tend to drop to collect the ball your attacking midfielder may do so as well all of this will help that transition when playing out from the back the passing directness is set to slightly shorter which is standard that comes with that positive mentality but the tempo is set to extremely high where this tactic will be looking to get the ball from back to front with a very very quick tempo. In the final third we are going to be sending in our low crosses. In transition when the possession has been lost we will counter press try and win that ball back as soon after losing it and when possession has been won well as soon as we win the ball we're going to go on a counter attack and try and score some goals. When the goalkeeper is in possession he will look to roll it out that is his distribution type. For out of possession we will be using the offside trap a much higher line of engagement with a standard defensive line. The defensive width is set to standard but it will be interesting to see what it defends like when you are forcing the opposition on the outside only because the defensive midfielder will be holding his position so he will look to be kind of operating in these areas here with the two centre backs of course but these inverted wing backs as well they'll be cutting inside and playing a lot of their game in these narrow areas so maybe so maybe you could force the play inside as that's where a lot of your players will be possible that's a possible option I do not know so test at your own risk for the trigger press much more often is set as well and we will be preventing that short goalkeeper distribution now for the players for the goalkeeper he has no added instruction but he is a sweeper keeper on support the two fullbacks are inverted wing backs both of whom are on attacking duty they will be shooting less often tackling harder and marking tighter the two center backs are ball playing defenders both on defensive duties, they will be shooting less often, staying wider, tackling harder and marking tighter. The holding midfielder is the defensive midfielder on support, shooting less often, holding his position, tackling harder, marking tighter. The two wingers, both flanks, are defensive wingers on supportive duties. They are taking more risk, shooting less often and getting further forward. 
the attacking midfielder, that number 10. He's going to be taking more risk, dribbling more often, shooting less often, moving into the channels, tackling harder, marking tighter. He is the attacking midfielder on the attacking duty. Lastly, up top, two advanced forwards with identical instructions. They are going to be taking more risk, dribbling more, tackling harder, and also marking tighter. So, that there wraps up the team instructions, the player instructions and their roles. Now, we're going to get stuck into that last game, which is a crunch game, by the way. So at the moment, we are on top of the league. We've played 47, a lot of games. We do have our points tally on 106, but Man United are on 104. If we lose this and Man United win, well, they go top. So it is going to be interesting. We are playing Manchester City for the very last game of the season. They are six. So let's get stuck into this game and hopefully we win and win the league. And then after we can look at all of those important statistics. So let's get stuck into that game. So this is the team that we're going to go for. Cole Bellwin go, Emre Chan as that right inverted wing back, Guerrero as the left inverted wing back, Ikanji Mats Hummels at the back, Witzel as the holding midfielder, Giovanni Reyna on the left, Hazard on the right, Fogan, not Eden, Marco Royce in attacking midfield, Daniel Marlin up top with Erlen Haaland. Now let me just check Erlen Haaland. I wanted to see his position if he had any sad preference, but he doesn't. I wanted to check because he's left footed. But he does take first time. You know what? I'll just swap it. Have Harlan on the left and Daniel Marlin on the right. Let's get stuck into this game. Come on, Dortmund. For the team talk, we're just going to ask the assistant. But we are going to try and motivate these little units here. So the defensive midfield and the attack. So we're going to point some fingers. I have faith in you. Midfield, point finger. I have faith. Attackers, point fingers. I have faith. Let's get stuck into that game. Today we're going to be using 2D. I've been using 3D recently, but we're going to use 2D because I know a few of you prefer 2D now. <laughs> Surprisingly, I thought most of you would have preferred. Oh, and it's a goal. Manuel Akanji puts Dortmund ahead. I thought most of you would have preferred 3D, but apparently a lot of you do still like 2D. So we will be using 2D, but there's supposed to be replays for the goals on 3D. So we put the replays back on. <laughs> it was on, but it was off. So when we do score a goal, or hopefully there is goals, more goals. It will be played in 3D. 20 minutes in and we just have that one goal, which was a corner. Daniel Marlon dribbling down that byline. Emre Chan Marlon again. Down the byline again. Oh, what's happened there? Ping pong. Ping pong inside the Man City box and they clear it. Max Hummel's on the ball now. He recovers the ball. Vaughan has a Daniel Marlon one on one. Oh, well held by Edison. I, I didn't even know if he shot there. He just looked like he ran into the goalkeeper. Oh, he's won it. Haaland. Ah, oh, he's got to bury that son. I've put him on the left-hand side for that specific reason. So the ball's on his left foot and he can just smash it in. And he's missed. And he's missed. Kevin De Bruyne just running with the ball. Oh, what a ball that was as well. Kevin De Bruyne with a free kick. It's a bit far out, but is it? Oh, just over the bar. Well, this game's not as exciting as it could be. <laughs> It's a free kick to Manchester City, but we aren't going to see it. Oh, there's a last minute highlight in this first half as well. Raheem Sterling, Emre Chan wins the ball. Here goes Dortmund on the counter attack, but they do intercept the ball. Marco Royce intercepts it now for Dortmund. Hazard down that right flank. Going down the byline again. Emre Chan, Hazard. Marco Royce, oh, ah. he should have scored. He's just volleyed that wide. Let's get back into the dressing room, boys. I've told them that I'm disappointed. We've had little possession so far. Things have to improve. I mean, the game plan is not exactly to have possession of the ball, but let's see how this team talk works. Here is Giovanni, 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 Reyna on the ball. Haaland driving towards the Manchester City defence now. He crosses it in, but Laporte heads it out. Guerrero now, is he going to cross it in? Nope. To Reyna. Alex Witzel on the edge of the box and he hits the woodwork. He hits the woodwork and the Mats Hummels lets the ball run out. Oh, here's another corner. Guerrero. Kanji, we've hit the woodwork, but Haaland... Puts in the rebound and it's two. And it's two to Dortmund. We, we finally get to see a 3D highlight. It's hit the woodwork. Harlem puts the ball in the net. Unlucky for Edison. Unlucky for Manchester City. But it is Dortmund to Manchester City. No, oh, it's another corner. And it's another goal. <laughs> what is going on? Manchester City just cannot defend corners. And it looks like corners are still working pretty well on Football Manager. So Guerrero whips it in. Let's look at the area. This is all going to the near post still. I actually don't know what's going on there. 
So Marlon's shot is hit the post. Edison's tried to clutch the ball out of the air. Misses it and it falls to Haaland. Here's Haaland on the ball. Hazard and Ray Chan. Now we're playing some football with confidence. Here's Haaland. He's got a score. We've had chances to score from open play. So it's not as if this tactic can only score from set pieces. We should be 5-0 up. We should be 5 up. And Haaland should have 4 at least. Trying to not let that performance drop. Julian Brandt on for Giovanni Reynolds. Julian Brandt is on some fantastic form in real life as well. Marco Royce off for... Let's get Makuku on. Makuku, Makoko. And we put Marlon in the attacking midfield area because I want Makuku to have a chance at goal, basically. So there's 10 minutes left. We've dominated this game, to be fair. We've absolutely dominated. Look at the XG. We are overperforming on the XG, but we could have scored more. I don't think we actually scored the very good chances, the clear-cut chances like the one-on-ones, we didn't put away. Henry Chan intercepts the ball, good defender there. There's Makoko, go on son, on his left eye, oh, he's played in Haaland, he's missed another one-on-one. -on -one. Dortmund are the champions of the FM Testing Hub League. Champions, time to celebrate. But we have some statistics to look at before we end this video, don't we? So, of course, as we've seen, Dortmund are the champions where we played 48, we won 34, we drew seven, losing seven as well and points tally on 109 and as we can see Haaland was the top goal scorer. Looking at the team stats, Dortmund scored the most goals 148, absolutely incredible. 2.27 goals per game for the most shots for Dortmund with 1037. For the fewest shots against, we are not in the top 8 so again defensively <laughs> maybe we can tweak something. For the best pass completion, we aren't in the top 8 for the most possession, for the average possession again not in the top 8. But the most tackles won, no surprise, Dortmund on top of that table with 986. For the most dribbles made, we should be there. Here we are, we are in second place with 654 dribbles made. For the most clean sheets, Dortmund are not in that top 8. And again, for the conceded, not in the top 8. Looking at the top goal scorers, Haaland, 54 goals. Daniel Marlon, 31 goals. So we are scoring a lot of goals, especially the strikers. For the most assists, Rafael Guerrero on 21. Marco Royce on 20. Fulgan Hazard on 19. For the most shots, it is Cristiano Ronaldo. And then Lewandowski. And then Haaland. <laughs> He's on 220 for the most man of the match awards. Haaland joined second with 13. And Rafael Guerrero joined fourth with 10. Most key passes, Rafael Guerrero, I'm guessing that is the set pieces and there is Marco Royce as well on 175. For the best pass completion, nobody in the top 8. For the most tackles, 1. We do have Rafael Guerrero and Fulgan Hazard. For the most dribbles made, we do not have anybody in the top 8. Most clean sheets, nobody there. Views conceded, nobody there. So here we are back in that all important data hub and again we can look at the past map for the most recent game that we just watched against Manchester City. But the most important things to pick up here is that Dortmund's past combinations were generally completed in the deeper areas and in the middle. Witzel was the heart of everything good in the middle out there linking up with nine other players and that's your holding midfielder so make sure you have a very decent holding midfielder. Someone that can tackle, win the ball but also someone that's good on the ball and has decent vision as well because he needs to be able to find those more important passes for the attacking efficiency look at Dortmund goal aggressive and clinical with their shooting for the defensive efficiency you can see that we were quiet and impenetrable as well no surprise there for the passing we made fewer passes and we were also inaccurate and that could be down to the sheer fact that we are playing with that extremely high tempo looking at the tackling we did make a lot of tackles but apparently we were poor that could be down again to the high volume of tackles that we did make. Looking at the possession, we did frequently win the ball. So though it said that we were poor in tackling, we did win the ball a lot regardless. And we were loose in possession. That could be down to the fact that we are playing with an extremely high tempo. And lastly, looking at the passes attempted. 507 passes attempted per game compared to the average team with 614 passes per game. So we are below the average, but again, we aren't a possession-based side. That is not what we are striving for. We did make fewer passes in the middle third than expected, and we made most of our passes just before that halfway line. I was going to say that we can look at the top goal scorers and the top assists in all competitions, but there was only one competition and we already saw the top goal scorers, Harlan, Marlon, but we can see that Akanji has got a lot of goals, 11, so did Max Hommel, so the set pieces work very well in this league. 
Looking at the assist, Rafael Guerrero 21, Marco Royce 20, Fulgin has a 19, Giovanni Reyna on 12 and Haaland on 11. But unfortunately that wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it make sure you do download this tactic as well the link will be in the description so will the discord link as well i'll see you guys soon if you are new and you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed make sure you like this video leave a comment all of that is important in helping this channel grow but also downloading that one footballing app even if you don't use it just download it just download it that will help the channel of course it will i'll see you guys soon stay safe and peace out